الحمد لله استهل بالحمد خير ما نزل إليك خمسا تبدأ السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم ما بعد Honorable and, and beloved listeners Today we discuss the 12th Jews of the Quran Sharif وَمَا مِنْ دَابَّةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَّا عَلَى اللَّهِ رِزْقُهَا This Jews consist of Surah Hud besides a few lines and then a portion of the famous Surah, Surah Yusuf. With regards to Surah Hud, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala speaks about different Anbiya alayhimu salatu was salam that had come to the people, Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu was salam, Sayyidina Hud alayhi salatu was salam, Sayyidina Salih alayhi salatu was salam, very briefly, Allah Ta'ala speaks about Ibrahim alayhi salam and the glad tidings that Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala had given regarding his son Ishaq. Thereafter, Sayyidina Lut alayhi salatu was salam, Sayyidina Shu'ib alayhi salam, and then Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala speaks about Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu was salam. In one hadith, the Sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had observed that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's beard was becoming white. When they commented and they said to him that you are now becoming white, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned several surahs, amongst them Surah Hud, that Surah Hud has made me old. In Surah Hud, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala speaks about these Nabis, these Prophets, alayhimu salatu was salam, their communities, the arrogance of the communities, their disbelief, the persecutions of the Anbiya alayhimu salatu was salam, and then Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala's destruction. There was one commentator of the Quran that contemplated with regards to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam becoming old or saying that he has become old because of Surah Hud. And then this person had seen in his dream Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and in the dream he inquired Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam what in Surah Hud has made you old? So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied one ayah in Surah Hud Fastaqim kama umirt, remain steadfast like how you have been commanded. Remaining steadfast is a very, very pertinent aspect of our deen, but at the same time, it is daunting, it is difficult, and hence Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam delivers this very, very important message that we need to remain steadfast on our deen. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا When Allah Ta'ala speaks about the beautiful ni'mats from the time a person leaves this world, that the malaika will come down to that person, the important condition is to say رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ Our Rabb is Allah and then to remain steadfast on رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ Our Rabb is Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Surah Hud begins with the, with the discussion of the Qur'an and speaks about the firmness and the greatness of the Qur'an Sharif. But then the 12th Jews begins with a very, very great reminder. وَمَا مِنْ دَابَّةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَّا عَلَى اللَّهِ رِزْقُهَا وَيَعْلَمُ مُسْتَخَذَّهَا وَمُسْتَوْدَعَهَا In this, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala speaks about a responsibility that Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala has taken upon himself. Remember, no one can impose anything on Allah Rabbul Izzat, but Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala has taken it upon himself that Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala grants sustenance and Allah says that there is no moving creature fill earth on this earth. 
but upon Allah Rabbul Izzat is the responsibility of the rizq, of the sustenance of that individual. Allah Tabaraku wa Ta'ala is the Rabb and Allah Tabaraku wa Ta'ala is also the Raziq. And in this way, Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala takes the great responsibility of our sustenance and it is important for us to bring this into our lives. Once Allah Ta'ala commanded Sayyiduna Musa alayhi salatu was salam to strike a rock with his asa, with his staff. When it cracked open, he found another rock within it. He struck the second rock, causing it to crack open. Yet again, he found a third rock within it. When he struck the third rock, he found a little creature with its sustenance in his mouth, which according to some narrations, a blade of grass. Allah Ta'ala then afforded Musa alayhi salam the opportunity to listen to the creature praising Allah Ta'ala, Subhana may yarani wa yasma'u kalami wa ya'rifu makani wa yadhkuruni wa la yansani. Glory be to that being who sees me, who hears my speech, he knows my whereabouts, and he remembers me and does not forget me. And a very clear message وَيَعْلَمُ مُسْتَقَذَّهَا وَمُسْتَوْدَعَهَا Allah knows our needs and Allah Tabarakhu wa Ta'ala also knows where to deliver our needs. And in this manner, Allah Tabarakhu wa Ta'ala begins this juz and speaks about the different Anbiya alayhimu salatu wa salam whose names we have just mentioned. And then towards the end of the surah, why all of this? Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention these Anbiya alayhimu salam we had discussed before in Surah Al-A'raf. Allah Ta'ala says, وَكُلَّنْ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ مِنْ أَنْبَاءِ الرُّسُلِ مَا نُثَبِّتُ بِهِ فُعَادَكَ For the consolement of Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to firmly establish the heart in Nabi Alayhi Salatu Wasallam to further Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's endurance to heighten the determination of our Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Thereafter, Allah tabarakhu wa ta'ala speaks about Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salatu wa salam in Surah Yusuf and Allah himself describes it Nahnu naqussu alayka ahsan al-qasas O Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we relate to you the best of incidents, the best of stories, and that is the story of Sayyidina Yusuf wa ala nabiyyina wa alayhi salatu was salam. Now when we look at Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam's incident and the way Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala has revealed it to Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wasallam, we see that there is a change in the methodology of the Quran Sharif. Other Anbiya alayhim salatu was salam, we find the incidents that have been narrated in different parts of the Quran Sharif, new words regarding them, regarding their people, different ways Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala speaks about them, different aspects of their lives. But when it comes to Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam, first of all the incident is not re- repeated anywhere else in the Quran Sharif, but from beginning to end here in Surah Yusuf. Now the incident of Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam is well known. We will just try to draw some lessons from what we know with regarding to the Surah so that it will help us in our own life. When we look at the life of Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam and uh, we draw a comparison to the life of our Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we'll find many common grounds. And one common ground was like the brothers of Yusuf alayhi salatu wa salam were jealous regarding Yusuf alayhi salatu wa salam. They plotted to kill him. We will find the same regarding our Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the Quraysh had also plotted to assassinate our Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is the reason or the apparent reason 
why Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had undergone and undertaken the hijrah and we will find that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam remained in the cave of Thawr for a period of three days. So here we find there are great similarities between his life and the life of Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam. But all in all we will understand that Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala shows us one very very important lesson. And that is Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is musabbibul azbab. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is the being that brings out the azbab, the means. Allah ta'ala is the one that creates the means. And we find it in the life of Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam in a very very unique way. On the one hand, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also wants to show us that honor, integrity lies in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that from the depths of the well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevated Sayyiduna Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam to the throne of Egypt. Then we also find that Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam has left an example for mankind and that is the example of chastity. Invited by the wife of the Aziz of Egypt, the wife of the governor of Egypt, famously her name is known as Zulekha. Yet Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam did not succumb to her desires. He did not give in to her desires. She made an allegation against Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam that he was the person that initiated all of that. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala shows a little child then bears testimony in favor of Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam. Of course, Zulaikha, she acknowledges and she admits her guilt to the other woman of Egypt that had cut the hands. وَلَقَدْ رَاوَدْتُهُ عَنْ نَفْسِهِ فَاسْتَعْصَمْ And also in front of the king of Egypt, she had also said, قَالَتِ مُرَأَةُ الْعَزِيزِ الْآنِ حَسْ حَسَ الْحَقِّ She had said that the truth has come to light. أَنَا رَاوَدْتُهُ I was the one that sought to seduce him. So Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala shows how Allah's workings are and how Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala will defend his slaves and how Allah Ta'ala will bring them to, to an elevated status the way Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala would so desire. One last aspect that we will discuss is when he was threatened to be put into prison, Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam's dua. Remember every Nabi, there is one dua of that Nabi that is peculiar, one dua of that Nabi that is wondrous, that is beyond our comprehension. And here Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam's dua, Rabbi sijnu ahabbu ilayya, Mimma yad'oonani ilay. O my Rabb, a sijan, the prison, is more beloved to me than that what they called me, they invited me towards. I'll give up my freedom, ya Allah, but I will never ever break your command. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq and may Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala bless us with the practice of this Qur'an. Bless us with the love of the Qur'an. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyi al-kareem wa alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. بالحمد حين تقرأ بالحمد حين تقرأ